so at first glance, this probably appears to be a fairly uh, nondescript, uh, unassuming envelope from the middle of the 19th century, but there's a couple of aspects to it that make it really extraordinary, and I'd like to go over those right now. The first of which is this manuscript notation at the top left that says Via Tuantepec. Now, if you were sending a letter from the west coast of the United States to the east coast in the 1850s, there were no fewer than eight different routes your letter could have taken. And you as the sender actually had a say in how your mail was carried. You could endorse it and say that you want it carried via overland mail or via Panama. The default route, uh, is the way most mail was carried, was via Panama. It would travel down the west coast of North America, cross the Panamanian Isthmus, and then get loaded onto another ship and carried up to New Orleans. But in June of 1858, an experimental route, basically the same thing, but crossing Central America through the town of Tehuantepec, Mexico, uh, was introduced. This route was about 2,000 miles shorter, so a lot of people thought it would replace the Panamanian route and become the predominant way for mail to be carried. Unfortunately, people did not uh, take to using the Tehuantepec route. Uh, over its year of existence, it only raised about $5,300 against a budget of a quarter of a million dollars, so it was a huge money loss. And that's why today there's only about 30 covers known that were carried via Tehuantepec. So it's a very rare route uh, that was only in existence for 12 months. We also have to look at who this letter is addressed to. This is addressed to Mrs. Ellen H. Stanton, who was the wife of Edwin Stanton, who would go on to find fame as Abraham Lincoln's Secretary of War during the Civil War. He would led the Union's military efforts, in large part as responsible for their victory during the war. He also led the manhunt to capture John Wilkes Booth after Abraham Lincoln's assassination. He would continue to serve as Secretary of War under President Andrew Johnson, and it was Johnson's efforts to remove Stanton from power that led to his impeachment in 1868. But that was all years in the future when this letter was written. Uh, this is dated December 20th, 1858. At the time, Edwin Stanton was in California. On behalf of the federal government, there were some land disputes originating from the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo after the Mexican-American War, and Stanton was representing the federal government uh, in order to resolve these land disputes. It was a big part of how he made his name in the legal profession and in politics, uh, and he would join the Buchanan administration uh, shortly thereafter. Now, this letter was written by Stanton. He was a prolific letter writer to his wife, Ellen, uh, but she was very unhappy about his trip to California. She had just had uh, an infant daughter who was very sick at the time, and she was not thrilled about her husband's decision to travel to California for a year. Uh, he did end up earning $25,000, which was a huge sum of money at the time, but uh, there was a bit of a riff in their marriage at this point over his decision to travel to California. Uh, he would return in January of 1858, so this is one of the last letters uh, that Edwin Stanton wrote to his wife back home in Pittsburgh. So Edwin Stanton's legacy is significant. Two years after his death in 1869, there was a seven cent postage stamp issued with his portrait on it. In 1890, a $1 treasury note with Stanton's portrait was issued. This is a very rare note that is today considered to be one of the most beautiful bank notes ever produced by the United States. But I think what Stanton is best remembered for is his quote that he delivered at Lincoln's deathbed. Uh, when he was watching the president pass away, he said, now he belongs to the ages. And I think that this cover, having made that uh, incredible journey thousands of miles uh, across Mexico in the 1850s, and having survived for over 160 years, now this cover belongs to the ages as well. And we're very excited to be able to offer it at auction in our upcoming sale.